Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. Today, we're just having a chit chat. It's a, it's a, I've got my glass of wine. This is actually non-alcoholic wine and I'm trying it for the first time. I will put the name of it probably on the screen or in the description, but let's taste it. Okay, I'm not mad at it. It's a little bit like tart, like it's a little bit sour, but it's really nice. I got it from Waitrose. I saw, let's actually just have a girl chat, you know, get a drink, get a glass. It's the evening, relax, let's talk, let's gist. Because it was around Valentine's Day six years ago when my last relationship ended. Yeah. That was a tough time, I can't lie to you, that was a tough time. But I've been single for six years now. And it's crazy, like between the age of 18 to 24, I'm 24 now, I've been single, I haven't been in a relationship. And some, I'm not gonna lie and say that I've always been content being single, but I've always tried to approach being single with a degree of intentionality. Now, for some people, it may feel like, okay, you're just single, a relationship will come around soon, you know, just wait. But I think sometimes when you're healing from bad relationships, when you are unlearning very toxic habits, beliefs, patterns, patterns um, and you are healing from quite frankly some very hurtful times and hurtful relationships it can be hard to see yourself in a healthy relationship and also you've got the mixed emotions of then desiring a relationship whilst also simultaneously being a bit nervous about whether it will happen for you or about the next relationship that is to come and honestly as a single woman it's easy to fall into some traps when you're single because especially if you are really desiring a relationship and one thing I have told myself and committed to is I am not going to get into another relationship out of fear of being lonely and I'm also not going to let loneliness put this grey cloud over my entire life. I want to be happy, fulfilled, peaceful, living a purposeful life whether I'm single or in a relationship and in a relationship right so oftentimes we think these feelings of happiness, these feelings of worthiness, these feelings of love are only attached to romance and so I wanted to come and just sit down with you guys and just talk and I want to hear from you in the comments as well this one is one of those let's talk about it videos I'm just initiating conversation now let's cut to the nitty-gritty stuff and the honest truth because I think often when you talk about being single and being content as a single person people think you don't go through some kind of negative feelings or negative or just in general let's forget the word negative you don't go through very real emotions. So dealing with things like loneliness, fear, horniness, let's just keep it a hundred. I'm a Christian if you didn't know. And also the time that I have been single correlates exactly to the time that I have been a Christian. So since being a Christian, I haven't been in a relationship, which is very, very, God, are you doing something there? We don't know. It's very real as a single person, whether you're you're doing this um, because of religious reasons or whatever, it's very common to feel lonely. Oftentimes we see relationships as one of the best forms of companionship. And I totally hear it, right? To have a boyfriend or a partner who can be with you pretty much at all times is really exciting to think about, especially because you get to enjoy somebody else's company. You get to be entertained by someone else. You don't have to do things alone. And I, because I am single, even though I have friends, even though I have amazing family too, I spend a lot of time alone. You know, a lot of the things that people would typically do with their significant other, I do by myself or I have to do with my friends. And then when your friends are also in relationships, you're left on your own laurels really to just do things by yourself or with your other single friends. And I'm not going to sit here and lie and say feelings of loneliness are not real because they really are. It's really easy to allow your mind and your, your thoughts to be consumed with, I really want someone. I want someone to share these moments with. Even if they're not, you know, the most deepest, profound moments, 
Even if I'm just chilling in the living room, I would like somebody else's presence. And oftentimes you can long for someone else's presence to fill your space when you feel like it's just you and it's constantly just you. Someone else to motivate you and affirm you. And I think that these things are important. I think that it's important if you do desire a relationship to desire that from someone. But I think there's a difference between desire and longing. And sometimes when we are longing for something, especially when you don't know when that thing is coming, you make yourself depressed, you make yourself upset, you make yourself disappointed, right? And so often I try to psych my, well not psych myself out, remind myself that whilst it's great to have that desire, you don't know when your next partner is coming. And so you have to do something in the meantime and in the meantime doesn't have to be second best to when they actually do come. When you're single or maybe you don't even have a lot of friends or you don't have a lot of family around you or you've gotten to a place where you're alone a lot more more of the time you actually have to combat do I like my own company and when I say do I like my own company it's more so I think when we're alone that's when we hear our thoughts the loudest that's when we are confronted with most of our fears and most of us live in a busy world we have a busy life where we can actually drown out our own thoughts our own feelings um, our own heart our own uh, the, the things we tell ourselves, our own self-talk our internal monologue we can actually block that out because we are filled with media you're watching youtube you're watching tv you're listening to a podcast you're always listening to something else and not really listening or tuning into yourself but i think that when you're single and you spend a lot of time alone you start to realize that all these expectations that i have of other people and all these desires that i want to put on other people as expectations i should also take the responsibility to fulfill them so for example it's easy to want a relationship because you want to be affirmed you want to be uh served you want to be reminded that you're beautiful you want to be reminded that you can do it and have somebody in your corner but the question you have to ask yourself first is are you in your corner you know a lot of times we want somebody to come and be that voice that we lack internally right you want somebody to come and tell you you're beautiful you've got this but is your internal monologue you're ugly you shouldn't be that confident you haven't got this there's you're an imposter in this space you need to correct your internal monologue a lot of us are looking for relationships to come and basically fluff up our self-esteem because we've decided that's not going to be our responsibility but it's a huge expectation to put on somebody else especially if you're living for it right the next thing is sex let's just keep it 100 percent. is this video gonna get monetized anyways it is what it is a girl's night but the next issue is sex being celibate for a long amount of time there are real feelings which you have to contend with right feelings of horniness like actually wanting and desiring to have sex it's it's hard sometimes dealing with those feelings but I think that's when my faith comes into play I'm celibate or abstinent because of my faith and it teaches me a new level of dependence and just generally with faith as well you have to remember this whole journey you're not just doing it to prove anything to yourself you're not doing it to prove anything to anyone else you're not actually doing this to prove anything to God you're actually doing this as an act of faith and an act of trust and the faith isn't that I'm going to save myself so that you can reward me with this amazing partner but actually I'm doing this as an act to please God I'm doing this as an act to have a good heart I'm doing this as an act of trusting God to tell me at the end of the road well done good and faithful servant because I trusted him and I did well with his instructions and with his commands and it's tough sometimes to trust God, this thing that you can't see with a very real feeling that you are feeling, right? I know the emotions. I can touch the emotions. I can touch my body. I can, this is real. I'm roasting right now. God doesn't always seem real because he doesn't always seem, because he's not tangible, right? That's a whole act of faith in itself. I'm going to have to deny these real feelings that I can feel in hopes that I'll be pleasing something that I can't see. 
that's a massive act of faith and I've had to do a lot of unlearning especially around sexuality and my sexuality and especially my sensuality and it hasn't been as and I think sometimes as Christian women we think that you know keeping ourselves and I think church culture in general we think that being celibate means completely repress or suppressing your sexuality we are still sexual beings right we are still people who have sexual appetites however we were not just created to have sex and in a sex obsessed world it's very easy to think if you're not having sex what are you doing if you're not having sex is there something wrong with you but actually it is a form of autonomy it is a form of exerting your own power by telling yourself there are things that I will do and there are things that I will not do and I'm starting to appreciate that my body has so many di different functions and it has so many different parts to it and all of them are available to me but I don't need to put everyone to use until the season is right especially if it's going to cloud my judgment when it comes to my view of myself my view of other people and actually keeping myself sacred holy pleasing unto God which is a huge thing that's laid on my heart it's what I am charged to do by my faith right but also do I view other people's bodies as sacred and holy because it's easy to just objectify people objectify yourself see yourself as how can I be the most sexual person for attention or to just please myself but having to repress that part of me has had has made me have to depend on God but also explore different parts of me as well because like I said whilst I am a sexual being I wasn't just made for sex and as somebody who has had sexual experiences before it can be quite tough to kind of you've you've crossed the line and now you have to come all the way back but like I said this really is a journey of faith and it's a lot about prayer it's a lot about community and accountability and just being very blunt and honest about where you're at you may not be perfect you're probably not going to be perfect but also there is a place where you can draw on for strength there is a place that you can draw on for grace and talking about lack of assurance let's talk about fear because it's very real to question Am I going to get married? When will I get married? Is someone going to give me a timeline? Because this is getting scary. But if it wasn't scary, it wouldn't require faith, right? It wouldn't require faith if I was sure on this date, by this age, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have kids, right? It's not something that I am privy to. It's not something that I know of. However, it's something that I desire. It's something that I'm working towards. It's something that I think I'm going to have. I know I'm going to have in the future, but it can often be scary because if everyone around you is getting into relationships, getting engaged, getting married, you know, pregnancy announcements, Girl, around Christmas time, everyone was announcing something to do with love and it can often feel like, what about me, right? But the truth of the matter is, your time is gonna come, right? Your time, whether it's now, whether it's next week in 10 years, your time will come. And even if it doesn't come, that's not all that you are. And also that is not the only way to feel fulfilled as a woman. Society has definitely taught women to view themselves, their worth and their value through the male gaze. And if you are not affirmed by men, if you are not viewed as attractive, if you've not been approached by men, if you haven't been proposed to, it's often seen as a slight or a knock to your femininity, your womanhood and your value. Unsubscribe from that notion, right? Do some relearning and some unlearning to understand that you are a woman, right? You don't need a man to affirm that for you. Your femininity, your beauty is not just something to be enjoyed by all men. Stop living for the attention of all men. It just takes one man. I'm a monogamous person. It just, I'm getting married to one man and that's it, right? And I pray that I'm getting to one ma married to one man for the rest of my life. That is my prayer. But but it just takes one man. I don't need to satisfy everybody. I don't need to satisfy everyone's desires. I don't need to satisfy everybody's preference. You don't have to like me. My husband will like me and I like me and that's enough. Your relationship status really is just a fraction of who you are as a person. Zoom out, completely zoom out of that. It's so easy to just get zoomed in and oftentimes begin to idolize this idea of, I need to be in a relationship. I need to be with this kind of guy. I need to be this kind of woman so that a guy will want me. 
Stop letting that be your God. Stop letting that be the thing that instructs you on who you should be and what you should be doing. Stop letting that consume your entire life because that's not all that you were created for. You're a woman with a purpose. You're a woman with a destiny. You're a woman with gifts and talents. You're a woman with community that you need to serve. You're a woman with resources in her hand that is meant to help change the world and leave an impact on the world around you. What are you doing with that? Because you can work on that whilst you're single. And I think when we start to turn our eyes to being purposeful, turn our eyes to working on our careers, working on our our self-worth, working on our brains, working on um, our our gifts and our talents and our crafts. When we begin to actually become occupied, we start to realize that we're not as empty as we thought. And this isn't to tell you to neglect those desires within you, because like I said, they are very real. You're probably feeling them. But the truth of the matter is it's not all that you are. You don't have to be completely consumed with these feelings. And so I wanted to talk about some lessons which I have learned, which have helped me get to this point of being content and happy being single. The first of which is whilst there may not be romance in my life, there is a lot of love. It's so easy to think that because you're not in a relationship, your life lacks love. But I've had to remind myself, God loves me, my family loves me, my friends love me, my sisters love me, the people around me love me, the genuine people around me love me and I need to soak up that love. A lot of us are denying ourselves the right to enjoy and appreciate the love we already have around us because we're chasing something which we don't have yet. Whilst I might not have romance in my life, whilst I might not have a boyfriend telling me I love you. I have a mum who tells me I love you all the time. I have a dad who tells me I'm beautiful and I love you all the time. I have sisters and friends and people in my life who tell me I love you. I love who you are and you don't have to do anything to earn my love. I read my Bible and I pray and I am affirmed by God that I have been loved since the beginning of time and I need to learn to take that love in and stop denying it because it's not coming in the form that I want. Because even when I do get that love in the romantic form, I'm going to realize quite quickly that's not going to be enough to sustain me. Just knowing that my husband or my partner loves me is not enough to make me feel entirely fulfilled. Have I got self-love? Do I appreciate the love of the people around me? Am I giving love as well? A lot of us are seeking to receive what we do not give. Do I give love to the people around me? Have I made them feel appreciated? Because one thing that does bring fulfillment is servitude. Serving other people around you, letting them know they are appreciated and seeing that smile on their face and receiving that as, wow, I've made an impact and I've made a change on someone in my life, right? A family member, my friend, I've reconciled my relationship with my parents. A lot of us are seeking to invest in romantic relationships, but we haven't even nurtured the relationships we have already. And so whilst your life may not be filled with this whirlwind romance and your life might not be looking like a Disney fairy tale, your life is full of a lot of love receive it. And if you feel like you don't feel loved, it's time to start building some new bridges and some new relationships with some new people. Or it's time to start assessing the relationships that you already have and realizing why they don't have love inside of them. Is it something that they're not doing? Is it something you're not doing? Do you feel like you love what you do? These feelings of love, love has so many different meanings. It has so many different categories. Have you accepted the love of God in your life? Do you believe God is just this harsh disciplinarian who is standing on the other side of time waiting to send you to hell? Because some of us have that perspective of Christianity or of, of, of our religion, right? That God is this, you know, disciplinarian when really and truly he's loving. He is love. Have you accepted that? Have you got that revelation? Because that might be the love that you are currently missing and that you are seeking to fill with a romantic relationship, but nothing can fill that gap. Nothing can fill the gap of the self-love that you might not have achieved yet or you might not have come into yet. Do you love yourself as a person? Is your self-talk constantly negative and self-deprecating? Do you feel as though I'm not good enough and you constantly feel as though you're missing the mark and you can't be gentle with yourself and you're constantly reminding yourself of the past failures and the embarrassment embarrassments and the shame that you have from your past and things that have already gone away, but you're constantly reminded and you're constantly disappointed in yourself. 
If you don't confront that, a relationship is not going to come and fix that. No amount of red roses and a box of chocolates on February 14th is going to get rid of the fact that you hate yourself. Let's keep it 100. A lot of us are waiting for this romantic relationship to come, thinking it is the remedy to our existing problems. It's not. And this doesn't mean that you have to fix all of these things before you can get into a relationship. Absolutely not. But what you might find is that it will make your relationship a little bit harder or you can't deal with being alone. The next lesson that I have learned is be in intentional and I'm going to talk about this from two angles because I think we can see lack of intentionality in two different parts of our lives sometimes as single women the first of which is you need to intentionally be single as in you need to choose happiness okay being single isn't the second hand okay I wasn't picked for the team now I'm just left on the sidelines it's not the consolation prize it's not the punishment for not meeting up to relationship standards or for not being enough being single is not a punishment it's not a reflection of whether God deemed you worthy to be in possession of a hunt of a husband or a boyfriend or a spouse absolutely not actually you need to intentionally take full advantage of this current season of your life being being single comes with so many perks and I wish I had seen this earlier. I think I was more so, you know, phased by the fact that I'm in uni, I want boys to like me, I want people to tell me I'm cute, I want people to buy me drinks. Now I can afford to buy my own drinks and I can sit in my own apartment drinking wine on my own. But when you're younger, you don't really have that kind of confidence to be able to approach things on your own. What I've realized is, especially in seeing, you know, some of my friends in relationships, having kids and actually being aware of the fact that relationships aren't easy, breezy, beautiful. I started to realize, damn, <laughs> I kind of like it here. And I'm happy to sit in this for a little while because once this season is over, once the season of being single is over and I get married, once the season of being, you know, childless is over and I have kids, I'm not getting the previous season back. This moment and this period of my life where I can be selfish well and, and selfish in the best way because often we see selfishness as a a really bad word but even being selfish with my dedication to my calling being selfish in my dedication to my ideas right being able to say i don't want to continue my company i want to move on to something else being able to say i don't want to live in this part of the world i want to move somewhere else i want to go on holiday tomorrow i want to buy this thing and not have to run my finances past anybody not have to take whilst it may be a foolish decision it's my foolish decision and I love that for me you know being able to eat my food in peace I'm not having somebody tap tap can I have some leave me alone all of these different things being able to enjoy my own space because oftentimes we see the films we see the posts on Instagram we see the picturesque romantic relationship we see something that we say that is my goal hashtag relationship goals I did a video on that go and watch it but the truth is whilst you may want the look of it you might not want all of it. It's like people who are only children, right? I wish I had siblings. People with siblings be like, I wish I could give my siblings back. How about that? And it's, it's true, the grass always seems greener on the other side, but both sides are going to require work. Some people look at being single and think, ugh, it's a drag. Some people look at the idea of getting married by 40 and think that is scary AF. The truth of the matter is a relationship is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be everything that you want it to be. The same way we're sitting here talking about the challenges of being single is the same way some people are sitting in relationships right now wishing they had spent more time appreciating their singleness and even wishing they could go back to being single. There are so many perks to being single and we need to learn to appreciate them, getting to control your time, not having to think about anybody else, having your selfish time. Let's be honest, all your money is your money. Whilst marriage, for example, does have some tax benefits it's great to be in control of your finances and not have to explain a big purchase to anybody else and not have to think about how do my decisions affect this other person all the time and don't even get me started about when you have kids and not having to share a space and I'm not saying this to say that relationships don't have their perks as well god knows I'm trying to knock boots with somebody and have somebody take me out to dinner and help me make decisions all right 
But I want to appreciate this season that I have right now because I won't always have these perks. As soon as I have a kid, I will always be a mother. I will always be a wife by God's grace. I will always be a wife. I will always have I will always have these responsibilities and I will welcome that when it comes. But I want to also know that I lived well when I was single and now I'm in this position of serving other people. Now that I'm in this position of having to love other people and having to show up for other people, I can do it well and I can embrace that season because I fully lived when I was free. I fully lived when I was single and it was just me. The grass ain't always greener on the other side. Yours just needs a little bit of watering, right? And you'll be great on this side. But the flip side, and hear me out on this one, sis, intentionality when it comes to dating. Now, a lot of us say, I'm single, I wanna be in a relationship, but how much intention have you put behind actually going on dates? Hmm? I know everyone has different ways that they want to date and I don't like dating apps and I don't like being, you know, match made and I don't like all of these different, I don't like blind dates. Okay, cool, what do you like? Start doing that, right? Because a lot of us complain and complain and complain. I'm not confident in this, I'm not doing this, I need this, I need that, but how have you positioned yourself? What have you done to work on it? What have you done to actually welcome in relationships into your life? A lot of us have that Disney complex or that Prince Charming complex that he's just gonna come and find me and whisk me out of this life that I'm currently living and we're gonna live happily ever after. Baby, it don't work like that. People aren't going to look for women in towers. People have high taxes to pay. But also it really is about if you're not satisfied with this part of your life, what are you doing to change it, right? And even if you are satisfied about it, if you know, for example, in my case, I don't wanna be single forever. And so what am I doing to prepare for a husband? Or what am I doing to equip myself to be a mother? Or what? And it's not to say you'll ever be ready. I do think that there are things that you can do to prepare. So if you are looking to get in a relationship, go on speed dates, go to events, go and do things which help you meet other people, you know, attractive people, people who have common interests with you. Position yourself, sis, because no one's coming to whisk you away, okay? And lastly, and I'll be honest, this was probably the biggest one, happiness is a choice. <laughs> it really is a choice to be happy in this season. I have had to be so intentional about realizing that my life isn't second class or second best just because I'm not in a relationship. Actually, I can make my life as beautiful, as fun, as exciting, as fulfilling as I want it to be. And there are so many other ways to do that. Friendships, relationships, romanticizing my life, enjoying myself, improving my confidence, loving my body, taking time to do nice things for myself. I've realized that all of these things actually make me happy and I don't need to wait on anybody to come and make me happy, I can actually be happy all on my own. I can actually be happy right now with what I have. I can be content and I'm choosing that over choosing to see what I'm missing and choosing to see what I wish I had all the time. And it doesn't mean it doesn't come to my mind from time to time. It just means that I'm deciding to focus more on what I do have rather than what I don't have and what I hope will come. And that has meant for me being intentional with my peace, being intentional to live a peaceful life, to make amends with the relationships I already have, right? So that I'm not looking to this romantic relationship to be the only thing that I'm investing in, but rather I am fulfilled in my relationship with my family, in my relationship with my friends, in the community that I have, in my network and my professional relationships. I'm fulfilled with those, I'm happy with those, right? Right. It will be a great add-on to have a lovely relationship, but I'm happy. But also because I've been choosing to be happy, because I've been choosing to create the life that I actually want to live and I've been doing the hard work on myself and confronting things within myself, which I was frankly unhappy with, because I've been doing all that and I've put in the work to do that and I'm now seeing the results and I love and cherish the results that I have, what I've learned is that my standards have gone up a little bit. My standard for myself, my expectations for myself have gone up, but also my understanding of relationships has changed and my appreciation for the life that I currently have has increased. And what that has meant is that 
I'm not going to let anybody come in to disturb my peace, disturb the beautiful life that I get to live and also disturb my faith and my relationship with God simply because I'm longing to be with someone. I'm starting to appreciate so much more the idea of I don't just want to be with anybody, I want to be with the right person. I want to be with somebody who can add to what I have and not take away from it. And it's going to take a very special person because I've had to become a very special person to love the life and have the life that I have. And a lot of us accept the bare minimum and accept people who are going to disturb our peace, violate our boundaries, not appreciate who we are because we don't appreciate who we are. When you take time to invest in yourself, you don't let anybody just come on this journey with you. You realize how much it took for you to get to where you are. Why would you then let somebody into your life who is going to pull you all the way back? For me, where I've got to in my life, I have such an appreciation for what I have that I don't want to welcome anyone into my life who will really come and mess that up for me. Because let's be honest, right? Your relationship with your significant other or your romantic partner is probably the most vulnerable you're going to get with anybody else. The only place that you're probably more vulnerable than that is in your prayer closet. And the reason why we're so vulnerable in our prayer times or in our journaling times is because we trust the person who we are writing to, crying to, asking things from and praising and worshipping. We trust them wholeheartedly. You don't just give your worship to undeserving things right you don't give your word and that's why it's so important to praise before you worship oh not me giving a whole sermon that's why it's so important to praise before you worship because you're reminding yourself the god that i am trusting myself to the god that i am submitting myself to is worthy of my trust and my submission if the next place that you're going to be pretty much that vulnerable is with your significant other have they proven that they can be trusted and that they are worthy of your submission? Let's be real. And a lot of us, because we are not sober-minded, because our minds are so clouded with fear, because our minds and our hearts are so clouded with, I'm lonely, social media is telling me I should have this, my peers have this, my age mates have done this, why am I not engaged yet? Why am I not married yet? The clock of time is ticking against me. Because we have all of these fears going up, around in our mind and in our hearts. Our hearts are not guarded. Our hearts have been infiltrated by these thoughts and we don't guard it. We don't guard our hearts. We don't protect ourselves and we then let anybody have access to us and we become vulnerable with the wrong people and it is possible to be vulnerable with the wrong person why because vulnerability is pretty much exposing your nakedness exposing your heart and giving somebody the ability to have access to you but also then having the ability to hurt you having the ability to crush you because they are holding the most tender part of you and a lot of us sometimes when we are so clouded with fear and loneliness and all these other you know comparisons that we have we trust our hearts with people who we're not sure if they can care for it or whether they will crush it you need discernment. Discernment is something for the sober-minded, right? When you are of sober mind, when you can fully assess yourself and fully assess the situation, that's when you can really discern things. Discernment is hard when your judgment is clouded. And a lot of our judgments have been clouded because we are so riddled with fear, we are so riddled with loneliness that we will go for anything. And I started to realize for myself, my vulnerability should not be trusted with just anybody. Because when I am vulnerable I am at a very very sensitive point where I can be influenced and if somebody doesn't understand where I'm going what I've been through who I am they can influence me to go down a path which completely takes me away from God from my myself and throws me off for possibly years. You've seen people who have gotten into bad relationships and this isn't me being pessimistic and this isn't me believing that relationships only end negatively. That's not it at all. But you've seen people who get into relationships because, you know, my family were telling me I was nearly 30, I needed to get married. And then they're in that marriage or they're in that relationship and it completely ruins their entire life and it's hard for them to get back on track for decades. 
I don't want that for me, okay? Guard your destiny, guard your heart, guard your purpose, guard your calling, guard your mind, guard all of these things because you appreciate them and also you realize their value. You realize that God has given these things to you for you to diligently steward. You don't want any relationship, any friendship, any bad wrong move, anything that you watch or take in to come and take you away from that, to come and rob all of those things from you. Listen, sis, you are sensitive, okay? You are, I don't care how strong you are, I don't care how hard you work, I don't care. You are sensitive, your life is precious. Precious things are delicate. Be delicate with yourself, be delicate with your destiny, be delicate with your mind. Realize that the things that you are watching, the things that you are hearing, the things that you are scrolling past, and also the people who you are listening to and the people who you give access to you, you're also giving them access to your destiny. You're giving them access to your heart. You're giving them access to the rest of your life and your trajectory. Don't be afraid of having standards. Don't feel guilty for putting up boundaries. Don't feel guilty to have to correct people on the way that they act towards you or talk to you. And also don't feel uncomfortable by having to pull yourself up on it too and having to let yourself know that you're not doing very well at guarding your heart. You're spending too much time scrolling on Instagram and it's damaging you. It's making you more upset and it's veering you off focus. You need to focus on you right now. You need to focus on your relationship with God right now. You're idolizing relationships too much. You need to be able to have those conversations with yourself and be honest. Because a lot of us, oh no, you know, I'm just celebrating other people and that's absolutely amazing. But do you feel that little twinge of jealousy inside of your heart? Have you dealt with that? You know, and let's, you guys know me on this channel, I just keep it 100% real. I'm gonna say what you don't like. (laughs) But I felt it. Some people, you may, But I know in past times, I have felt it. You may be feeling it too. Just go and just pray, God, I keep asking myself, when will it be me? When will it be me? But God, maybe I need to stop asking you and just start trusting you. But sis, we've pretty much come to the end of this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that it has given you something to think about. I hope that it has been a good conversation let me know in the comment section down below some of your thoughts towards being single and how to approach being single so talk to me down in the comments talk to each other as always just keep it respectful and keep it helpful but i will talk to you very very soon please like this video definitely subscribe to me if you have not already and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a video from me i will talk to you very very soon and as always stay beautiful and stay blessed Mwah.